In today's review, we've got the Red Cathedral, kindly provided to us by Devere Games. This is a game of working together with other architects to construct a fabulous cathedral. You are going to be accumulating resources that you're going to store on your little board. You're going to be carrying these resources over to the Grand Cathedral and you're going to be claiming ahead of time which bits of the cathedral you're going to build. And you're going to be boldly saying, I'm going to construct this and this and this and this and this and then maybe you will and maybe you won't and maybe that will come back to bite you. Now, the more eagle-brained eyed of you will notice the words Devere on this, the publisher that made this game, also made a game I reviewed a little while ago called Silk. Now, this box is exactly the same size as the Silk box. Don't be fooled by this seemingly sparse board with a beautifully illustrated rondel in the middle of it. No, this game is deceptively packed full of genuinely very, very juicy decisions. And while I thought that Devere's Silk was pretty good, the Red Cathedral is just flat out great. With that put to bed, let's get down to brass tacks. How do you win this game? Well, you've got to be the most impressive architect on a collaborative project. You're going to build a cathedral. How are you going to be better than everybody else at building a cathedral? Well, you can claim up to six different distinct sections of cathedral to build. And when one player has finished building all six, then the game's going to end. And the winner is going to be the person who has developed the best kind of reputation in the eyes of Ivan the Terrible. And then you'll probably get a medal and maybe all of the other architects will get killed. I don't know. Let's not ask questions. You're going to accrue reputation gradually throughout the game by doing your job, i.e. building the cathedral. Do I have to just, just build the cathedral for, for Pete's sake? Look, you can do three different things on your turn. Let's keep it simple. Initially, you can move one of these dice sitting on this lovely rondel. The rules for moving these dice are initially pretty simple. You just look at the number of pips on a dice and move it that many sections. You'll notice there's some black sections with arrows around here dictating the areas which count as sort of big chunky spaces. So I could go white, three, one, two, three. Having landed here, there are two dice within this zone, which means I would get the resource depicted on the little tile times by the number of dice in that section after moving it. In this case, two dice and a green jewel. I get two green jewels, count them a week. Resources that you accrue during the game are gonna be sitting here on your little board and you have a total of 10 slots to put things in and keep them. And you'll notice here that there are actually four spaces already being taken up by pesky flags. Well, that moves us on to the second thing you can do as an action on your turn is simply to claim a bit of the cathedral to build. Rules for that, very simple. You know, if the ground floor section hasn't been claimed, then you have to claim that first. Afterwards, you can claim sections higher, providing that the sections beneath have been claimed. But you're just claiming it. You're just saying like, I'm gonna do that. Not necessarily gonna do that straight away. You're not necessarily even gonna do that. We'll come back to that later. And the third thing you can do on your turn is simply deliver some goods to the cathedral so that your workers can actually begin constructing the things that you've promised you will. And this is an action that allows you to take three different resources and drop them off at any different sites that you have claimed. In this instance over here, hey, I need two wood, a brick and a stone. I can probably do that eventually. And when you do do it, congratulations, you just got paid for the work. You flip it over, put your little flag back on it to show that you built that and hooray, you get paid in some money and some points. Now, as you might imagine, in a game that is literally about building a cathedral, a lot of the points you're gonna get at the end of the game are going to be from having built the cathedral. But there's slightly more to it than that. At the end of the game, you are going to score each individual column of buildings. And the player who has the most control over each of these distinct lines is going to get the vast majority of the points. Now, people in second place and third place, in terms of having done the most work, will get something, but honestly, you want to be the person who is <laughs> the lead architect on the project, particularly on some of these whopping, very tall sections. This section here is so tall, it doesn't even fit onto the B-roll. It's that big, b bigger than B-roll. And we've just stumbled onto deliciously thematic rule number one within the Red Cathedral. When you actually go and deliver these goods to finish an area of the cathedral, 
for just one more extra resource. One extra resource, you can chuck in maybe a piece of wood and say, oh, and you know what, actually, while I'm doing this, I'm going to build a really fancy door. Hmm, and you can put that door anywhere where a door could go. It doesn't necessarily have to be a part of the cathedral that you built originally. And that's neat. And it's double neat because at the end of the game, in terms of counting up who has majority of control of an area of the cathedral, it counts the same amount as having built an actual whole section. Yes, just because you've built a very fancy window or put a little cross on top of the dome, you're going to get as much credit for somebody who built an entire floor of this building. Now, crucially, that's not fair. And it's double not fair when, in terms of scoring at the end of the game, they're worth half as many points. A full section of completed thing is worth two points, but uh, one point for every embellishment, which means they are literally being valued by the eyes more more than they are being valued for real, which is a fantastic little bit of flair in a game that is ostensibly about uh, appearing to be a better architect than other people. Lush. Now, every time you're going to take one of these little flags and as an action claim an area of cathedral and say, I'm going to build that later, you're going to notice there's some little tiles on these and you're going to take one of these tiles off and you're going to place it somewhere on your board if you can afford to pay for it. Well, the slots cost different amounts. Some of them are only two, some of them are three, some of them are more. We'll come back to that in a second. But let's just say I do this. Bang, I have now upgraded my red dice with an extra little bonus power. Now, if this game seems simple so far, then we need to actually rewind now to the first action I was talking about to go into a bit more detail. When you land the dice in a location, you actually activate three different things at once, not just this little token. For example, if we had moved here, then yes, we get two green gemstones for landing on the gemstone slot. In addition to that, we would also get, if we had one, the bonus that gets activated by having a power on that dice. In this instance, every time we use the red dice, we're going to get an extra stone. Finally, each of these different quadrants of the board have a unique power. In fact, a choice of two different powers that you can activate in addition to getting all of this other stuff. And crucially, you can activate these three things in any order you like, doing some really neat little combos. And immediately in terms of replay value, these little cards, there's a bunch of different ones to put down on the board, which means you're not always going to have the same powers at play in the game. And these little tokens that dictate which resource you're going to get in which of these spaces, well, they're randomly set up at the start of the game and some powers even move them around, sometimes during a turn, allowing you to completely wazump things and do things that make other players go, gee whiz. So with these five dice and all of these different options, you've got a lot to think about already, just in terms of what you're going to do with this action, arguably the main action in the game. But if none of this stuff takes your fancy, then you can just grease the wheels of reality with cold, hard cash. Spending one coin per space to move either the white die or the die matching your player color additional spaces around the ring. Thematically, I guess you're either paying a freelancer or one of your staff to just go over there and, and get you some more wood. Just go, can you just walk a bit further? I'll give you a pound. One, two, three, four. That's much better. Thank you very much. Please enjoy your single shiny coin. The mechanical theming in this game is absolutely spot on and really does just bring to life a game that is ostensibly about you all working together to construct this large thing. But in reality, is all about getting ahead by just being a little bit cheeky and a little bit sneaky. So let's have some more delicious rules. Now, the first delicious rule in this game is the fact that on the score track, you have two distinct economies. You've got small points and big points. One of them is called prestige. The other one is not, I can't remember which is which, but one of them has got a big eagle on it. So I just call them eagle points. Little points, eagle points. Pretty sure it's not what it calls it in the manual but this is where I've landed and I'm happy. Can't you just let me be happy? Now, when it turns out that the designers of a game have added two distinct forms of victory points, it's safe to wonder if they have well and truly started taking the boondoggle for a little walkie. In reality though, this is actually pretty neat. And the fact that one of these resources is something you can spend. Now, early in the game, you'll notice that these big eagle points are stretched out quite 
thinly, although by the end of the score track, they're pretty much, well, they're exactly one for one with small points. Now this means that actions that get you big eagle points are fabulous early in the game, whereas actually actions that just get you lots of little points are not very useful at the start, but brilliant later on, trying to push you to play the game in a way that probably isn't going to be helpful to you as a player. A fun puzzle indeed. Secondly, and this is just a silly touch that I love, 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 you could trade your reputation for cash. So I can be like, look, look at this, this is great. I'm slightly over the three big eagle mark, which means I can go on my turn, hey, I'm just gonna trade away some of my reputation and I'm gonna get two coins. Pretty sweet to be me, thank you very much. What's wonderful about this is you can do this as many times as you want, which means you can then during your turn do something else that maybe just gets you another single point. Fabulous. You know what? I'm going to immediately trade in that reputation for another two coins. Ah, I've got some reputation. Thank you very much. It's very kind of you to say that. Uh, I'm going to do something terrible now and I'd like two more coins. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, that was me. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to take another two coins. Thank you very much. Now, if you remember these embellishments I mentioned earlier in the game, these things that you can just add a bit of pizzazz, a bit of sparkle to the cathedral that's going to catch the eye of Ivan. Well, when you go to build one of these at no additional action cost, you can chuck in some gemstones, or better, chuck in one of each type of gemstone to make your door or window or cross something super, super glitzy and impressive. Doing so is going to get you immediate eagle points. Now, that's what I call eagle points. Ding, ding, ding. Eagle sound effect beautiful creatures and doing so in the early game is going to rocket you up this track tremendously and honestly this is a game we talk about Devere packing a lot of game into into a small box and densely filling up this space but it's not just about the physicality of having components packed into a box the density of the design here is really a part of everything like every aspect of this has something crunched into it and i just love having played so many board games where the outside of the, the board is just a score track this now has an element of interactivity to it it's something you're actively looking at your eyes are darting around this rectangle they're spinning around the circle again and again they are scanning up and down these areas of cathedral looking for opportunities it's like a playground for your eyes uh, a kind of cognitive texture that just keeps you exciting, keeps things interesting. It's like when we talk about roll and rights. My favourite roll and rights are ones that allow you to make a variety of different marks on the paper. Circles, scribbles, crosses. This is the same thing, but for ocular movement. Side to side, up and down, round and round. It, it's, it's a fairground. So we've got this tightly packed design, but it's also just really mechanically funny. Infinitely trading in your reputation for cash, it's just inherently amusing. And more so than that is the fact that you're gonna get penalized sometimes for not doing your job. If we go back to have a look at this beautiful unfinished cathedral that I mentioned earlier in the game, if you claim a part of the cathedral and then don't build it, and then someone else claims the areas above that, but then they finish them first, you get penalized, losing points for every finished area of cathedral above yours in that same line, which is just delightful. This bravado of very early on grabbing up all of these bonuses and going, yes, 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 of course, of course, I'll, I'll, I'll build that. Particularly because as I mentioned, it's far more rewarding to finish these things at the end of the game when they're worth more points. So you're kind of encouraged to be a little bit cheeky with it, but at the same time, other players are going to make you look bad. They're going to purposefully snaffle that slot just above you and finish it. So that when the czar turns up and is like, oh, this is wonderful. And then they go downstairs and you haven't even started it. You're going to look like a prize plum. Sometimes just the puzzle of shifting around resources and spending stuff at the right time in order to make sure that you don't lose things by having to throw them away is enough of a puzzle in itself without you then having to scan these dice, think about all these other options, think about the area control of the cathedral. This tangled web of interacting things could so easily just be too much, but it isn't. It's exactly right. It's just a perfect amount of complexity. And unusually for me, to be honest, I can quite frequently be a little basic boy. 
I actually prefer the advanced variant of this game in which nothing changes dramatically, but the embellishments you want to build on the cathedral first have to be unlocked from your player board, adding just another little element to the decision making that keeps things ultra spicy. As you're probably starting to gather at this point, there's almost nothing I don't love about this game and it is inevitably going to take a place in my collection, pushing something else rudely and unceremoniously out. I'm eyeing up the things stacked on top of my cupboards right now and I really wanted to write in the review what it was going to replace, but maybe that's too contentious and I just can't decide. But honestly, an experience of this size in a box this small is fabulous. I mean, even the table space it takes up is coffee table rather than gaming table. But that's not the size it exists in in my head. It's a game that plays far more quickly than you'd expect. Blink and you'll miss it. It's all over. You failed to build a cathedral properly. <laughs> and it does play differently with fewer player counts or more. With two, it's a very head-to-head, -head, mean little cathedral of you sneaking and trying to just wring out total control of a column. Whereas with three or with four, you're building these huge sprawling things and it's inevitable that you're going to be penalized for failing to do your job properly, which is fun. The components are gorgeous and joyous to move around and play with and line up on your boards and actually texturally do a wonderful thing. This is definitely wood. These are bricks. These are stones. These are little nuggets of gold. In a lot of games, let's call it Euroaphasia, where you do start off with the intention of calling this cube mithril and this cube ice steel. But in reality, it's a blue cube and it's a gray cube within about 20 minutes. No, these resources are what they look like. These remain gems throughout the entirety of the game. For something this crunchy, it's a game that you'll whip through a lot more quickly than you'd expect. And it plays differently with two and three and four. With two, you've got this savvy head to head with a pretty small cathedral and lots of cutthroat last minute moves and lots of stalemates about moving the dice around the rondel. Whereas with four, obviously you have less control over the positions of the dice on the rondel, but the area control element becomes a far bigger part of the game and inevitably the opportunities for hubris blossom and bloom. Honestly, before I go ahead and obviously whap out the big old badge, I'm just going to point out a couple of things that I didn't like about the game, but really these are little tiny nitpicks. First of all, the player boards, they're very nicely designed, but I feel like the art direction on them doesn't match the aesthetic of the rest of the game. They're not bad. They just don't quite gel with the art design in a way that's just faintly disappointing if, like me, you're a bit of a snob. Secondly, and perhaps I got more of an issue with this, there's a rule in this game that doesn't quite work. It tells you that after you've moved the dice around and activated everything else, you're supposed to take the dice in that area, re-roll them, and then place them back in that slot, providing some new numbers and some new opportunities for future players. But everybody forgets this rule. Every time we have played this game, it's one of those problem rules that you just forget. And people are having to go, oh, you rolled them. Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't. And really, for me, this is something that maybe just should have been emphasized differently in the manual. And again, it's not a huge deal. It's just something that could have been emphasized differently in the manual. Possibly it should have told you to just re-roll the dice as soon as you've finished moving. Um, whatever, etc. It's just a problem rule. For whatever reason, it doesn't stick in your head. And that's just a very mild failing of the game's design. Honestly, though, apart from that, that is, that's it. That's, that's literally it. Um, this is a joyous little box of fun decisions. A little bit of brain crunch for those of people who want it. And again, just has a far bigger presence than a box of this size and a table footprint of this size would really suggest would be possible. It might be too brain melty for more casual tastes, but for my tastes is absolutely bang on. Lovely, lovely, delicious, nice. And that's the end of this video review of The Red Cathedral, a game I was so excited and tickled by and mechanically excited by uh, that I, I kind of just forgot to write any skits or jokes for this video. It's just a review. It's just, it's just a plain old video review. And I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope that that's okay. Because I love you. I don't, love you. I, don't, I don't know who you are. Um, 
You should, you should buy each other a drink or something, I guess. This is this is awkward. Uh, what's your name? Huh. All right, yeah. No, I've heard that name a lot. No, it's, it's a nice name. That's yeah, nice. No, I don't think it's a overused gauche. No, it's classic, I suppose. Some people would say it's classic. I, say it's, I wouldn't say it's a classic name, no, but I mean, it's, it's fine. It's good for you. So it suits you just fine. You can watch some videos if you want, or some other videos.